Welcome to another of CTEC's interval training videos. In this video, we're going to demonstrate interval geology for stratigraphic models. We begin by opening up the modeling and create a new project. And I'm going to give this a name. The site again is in feet without an actual projection. It's a local coordinate system. And once we create a project, we're ready to import our data. Now we're going to import borehole geology data in a CTEC format, which is our geo format. This data does represent stratigraphic layers. And often, you know a little bit more information than is in the geology data or the data file you're reading. In this particular case, the one thing I know that's not in that file is what the material is below the bottom. Each of these borings bottomed out at bedrock and so below the bottom surface is bedrock. So I'm going to go ahead and put that material name in. And once I do, it will have added six new materials, five defined between the six surfaces, 24 borings, and we're ready to go. Now before I go a lot further, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my project. I'm going to set my material colors. I do this now because if I do it now, all of the resulting models that I create will inherit those colors. And we can choose whatever we want, but I'm just going to pick some uh, colors here. And I'm going to I'm going to go in and the only one I really want to play with is I'm going to try to create a sand that looks a little bit more like sand to me. And finally, my bedrock is going to be a dark, darker gray. All right, we're ready to go. Close the settings, and let's uh, take a look at our data. So the first thing we can import is our borings. We'll add those to the map, I mean, instead of import. And I'm going to also add in my whole hierarchy. My hierarchy is the stratigraphic layers that define my system. So I'm going to add all of those, and they'll be adding points on the horizons when I do this. Add them to the map. I'm going to change what they're colored by for default and color them by the names of the surfaces. So these are going to be colored here. and. Again, these are surface names, not my geology layer names. All right, so now the next thing to do is to go ahead and add in some models. And as always, the first model we have to add is the 2D grid. Specify how we want that to look. I'm going to increase the X resolution because we've worked on this site before. I'm going to leave the convex hole though at 10%, a little larger than we did for the geostats video. And we'll take a look at that. Go to a top view. And close the modeling window for a second. This looks good to me. So the next step is to build a 3D grid. And we have a couple options there. And we're going to do things a little different than default. So I'm going to build a 3D grid. The default thing that it would do would be to define the grid between the uppermost and lowermost surfaces. But I'm going to change that, and I'm going to build a grid that has a flat bottom. And I'm going to do that because I want to actually include that bedrock layer. The lowest most point in my data is minus 56 feet. I'm going to go ahead and set my bottom of my model to be at minus 70 feet. The top's going to be defined by the ground surface or my topography. And we'll go ahead and display this to take a look at it. All right, color it by elevation. Okay, let's take a look. All right, there's my model with no vertical exaggeration. Let's set the scale up to three, and there's our flat bottom. And now let's see what the data looks like inside. So we'll, to do that, we'll make this model transparent. And as we rotate the model, we can see that we're going below the bottom of our data as we intended, leaving room for a a bottom-most layer that will be our bedrock. And I like this. We're ready to go. So let's go ahead and turn this 3D model off. 
and go back to our modeling window and build the stratigraphic model. All right, um, all the defaults are going to work fine for us here, so we'll just go. We'll accept the color it by the geologic layer names. And there we have it. Close our modeling window for a moment so we can see our model. Here's our legend, our geologic units. You can see our bedrock, gravel, sand, clay. Here's our silt and our fill layers, conformal to ground surface. So once we have this, what can we do with it? Well, the, the most obvious thing is let's want to see in between these layers. So let's go ahead and explode these layers apart. And I'm going to increase the default and explode by 20 feet. And it's going to hide the uh, base layer so that this rendering artifacts are going to go away. All right, there we are. Now let's turn off our borings that haven't been exploded. And there's our layers. We can see that the clay layer is pinched out, actually missing a little piece on the very edge. So it's getting very thin. And speaking of thickness, that would be a neat thing to see. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the thicknesses of all our layers are. So let's choose our exploded model. Okay, so let's change our symbology and color by thickness. So we choose geologic layer thickness. And with these maximums, I'm going to increase the number of layer levels to 20. And we'll go ahead. All right, this looks good. So once we have model colored by thickness. Let's add isolines to it. So we'll click on the isolines tool. Copy the symbology. All right, now that we have these contour lines colored by thickness, let's go back and color our layers once again by the material. All right, that's the look I'm going for. So we have our layers thicknesses and our stratigraphy displayed simultaneously. One of the things you want to remember always is save your work frequently. And one thing nice is the Intervault project is constantly saved for you. You don't have to do anything consciously to save it. So here we are. We're all done. Thank you for taking the time to watch this latest installment of Intervault training series. Thank you.